Good morning. This is Charlie Riverman Bergeron. And I'm a few minutes early, uh, just anticipating the moment and watching to see who arrives. Angelica, good morning. You're the first one to pop up on my screen and thank you for showing up. Steffi Whiteford, hello. Hello to you, dear. And it's a pleasure to greet you here on this very amazing day. The day that we take a look at some of the changes that are occurring for all of us. Shana, pleasure to meet you. Glad to be here. Uh, thank you for joining me. So we have a couple of minutes. And as you know, that um, the topic was uh, a strange uh, message for me um, this morning as I felt that um, the changes that each of us are going through are not just individual changes for you know each of us personally, but they're also part of um, the collective of change. And I know this week for me has been one of many changes that I had not anticipated. And as a result of that, it brought up fear, it brought up old patterns, it brought up childhood injuries, it brought up all sorts of uh, issues that I felt that I had pretty well under control, if there is such a thing as being, having ourselves under control. So that's what this morning's talk is really about, is how are we dealing with all of these changes? And can we come to a place where we can learn to embrace them? And that's what I find in my own journey. So most of my talks here are about my own personal journey. And I know they're your personal journey as well. So it's just a matter of uh, who, what, when, where, why, and how. Uh, the facts, uh, you know, are, are uniquely individual to each of us. Yet the process is ultimately the same process. And it's really the process of our evolution, our conscious evolution, as well as in the future, it will be part of our physical uh, evolution, our emotional evolution, and evolution on all aspects that we call living as a human human being. Misty Misty, good morning. Vicki Rovi, Katrina, Carmen, Gail, Nolene, Phoenix. Okay, so this is working. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm loving this. Okay, so what happened for me this week, um, and I'll just bring it up to yesterday or last night and probably go back and forth with it. I posted, a, I found a picture um, of a, a winding staircase, a spiraling staircase up to the light. And instantly, um, it hit me as my own journey to the light um, came forward in my own vision. And the, the message was uh, from, all it said was, Lakota seer. But here was the message. We are earth people on a spiritual journey to the stars. Our quest, our earth walk, is to look within, to know who we are, to see what we are connected, to see that we are connected to all things, that there is no separation only in the mind. And I said, thank you, because I have been in my mind all week long. And that's not a usual pattern for me. 
So I wrote in response, what came through me was, by our shift to living from the heart, we overcome our sense of disconnection and view the mind as the source of separation. And I'm gonna see if I can copy and paste that and put that in the sideline. There you go, perfect. And I believe I entered it and it should appear there. I'm getting better at this. I'm actually feeling more comfortable uh, speaking to you, although you may say, well, you always did, but there is a sense of self-worth that each of us right now is struggling in this change, in this change that we're going through. And it's that sense of self-worth that is presenting uh, hurdles and barriers to our moving uh, more quickly, advancing into our divine self more quickly. This is where we are all having to take these moments where everything in our life that's coming up for us that is uncomfortable we need to begin to accept that the uncomfortableness is the purpose of it i'm going to say that again the uncomfortableness is the purpose of all of these things that are rising within our conscious awareness and it's they're usually related to a pattern of our living where for the entire process of our physical being here from being in the womb to whatever age we are in relationship to time here on this planet all of the things that we have happened to us by us through us at us are being re uh, ar arisen they're arising for us to take another look and when we do that at least for me many of them are very very uncomfortable so these are the changes that um, we're going through and it's really important for each of us to know that we are safe. We are safe. We are safe within our own hearts. We may not feel safe outside of this physical body, so all of the things, but these patterns and memories that are coming up is really for us to deepen into the divine self and call forth the beautiful power of being that we truly are and not just overcome them but look at them as saying wow that was my journey to this point and i no longer need this i said the yesterday's to somebody um about i always talk about the the eye of the needle moving through of the eye of the needle we have all this baggage this is the baggage that we're really carrying it's it's uncomfortable it's mistakes we've made it's errors it's it's pain and suffering that has occurred in relationships or perhaps uh, we had errors in choices in our lives and we married the wrong person or uh, we're not talking to someone or somebody's not talking to us that we hold dearly in our hearts these are all the part and uh, practice of of our our path work what we've moved along down the path and what i see now is our guides and angels are placing this big giant rock in our path 
and I see them standing back and some of them are actually finding humor in this and they're saying, okay, here is all your stuff. We're going to put all your stuff right in the middle of your path because we know you want to get down the road. You want to become who you truly are. So we're going to pile all of this junk up and now you have to get rid of it. How are you going to do that? The first process is really to accept that that's your junk. And that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Accepting our junk, accepting our mistakes, accepting the uh, processes that we've been through on both physically, emotionally, and um, financially. Mine is a lot of it's financial. I'm, I'm waking up in the middle of the night with fear thoughts of lack of abundance. I, I've been bankrupt and I went bankrupt in my life. Um, I went from having lots of abundance to um, being homeless. Uh, and so that plays in my mind. And it came up this week for me in a situation where I was asked to present, to put down uh, a good sum of money for a, um, a process that I'm uh, going to go through with some healers. And it really tested me. It tested me. It tested my trust. It tested my uh, financial abundance issues. It tested my self-worth issues, was, which was the bottom line. All of these things that we have are struggling with are really about self-worth. Are you worth it? I want you to ask yourself, am I worth all the energy it's going to take to keep going? Am I worth it? It's really powerful when we start to think about our self-worth. We can say, oh, I, uh, this person in my life, I, you know, they're, they're meaningful to me and, and I love this person or I, you know, want to do this for so, so and so. Where do you stand in that picture? Where do you deny yourself the praise? Where do you deny yourself the pat on the back? Where do you not commit to something you know that might have great potential for you? And you just say, oh, well, I can't afford that, or oh, I can't do that, or I'm not going to trust that person because or that that because it could be it could be fraudulent or it could be uh, somebody out to take advantage of me. This is the thinking that has to end. If we're going to get down the road and get past that big giant boulder in the path, which is made up of all of our past garbage, we are not going to move very far. We have great strength and we can push that rock. We can push that boulder, that giant boulder. So for some of them, maybe a mountain, but you can move that mountain. But how much easier would it be if you didn't have to? What, how would it be, what would it look like for you if the path was clear? It's kind of scary. And there was no interference. There was no chaos. There was nobody telling you, no, you can't. So that's what came up for me this week. And I know it's, it's you know, the thinking of the ego. So, so, you know, so that's the thinking of the ego. Yes, it is. It's all in this brain, this artificial intelligence 
The brain is really just a collector of information. It doesn't have It's just like the computer that I'm talking on and that you're watching through. It gathers information, it sorts it out, it relates it into um, how we react with the world around us. And so we're learning that that programming is in error. It served a primordial man who had to fight saber-toothed saber tigers in order to survive. Where's your saber-toothed tiger? I want you to find your saber-toothed tiger. Look for it. Because that is what you're still doing. And right now we don't have to do that anymore. We can leap over the saber tiger. We can escape the saber tiger. We do not have to fight it anymore. We do not have to kill it. Because we're so much more than that primordial human being. So I pulled a card this morning, or a lot, I think it was last night, and interestingly, the card is change. <laughs> I love spirit. It just, you know, I try to avoid doing this, but every time I do, it, it, it hands me exactly what we need to talk about. So Nikki V says, uh, we are moving out of survival mode when those actions are appropriate. Yes, when we do appropriate actions, we react in an appropriate manner rather than out of fear or out of judgment, things start to move more freely. You were born in the era of the tiger, jump over the boulder, good one. So these are, again, each one of us are going to come to these um, understandings within ourselves. We're all unique. And we're going to learn that um, my way is not your way, and your way is not my way. But each of us have the ability to do this. And this is what's important, is not to forget that we have the ability. The world around us tries to tell us we don't have that. We need we need this product or we need that um, internet or we need, we need, we need, we need. And in that process of needing, it wears down our self-image and we feel needy in truth. What was the song? All I need is the air that I breathe. Hello. A lot of these old songs, there's verses in all of them that are talking about right now. They're, they were messengers back in the 60s and 70s. They didn't understand. Nobody understood that. They just wrote songs and sang them and they sounded like silly, airy fairy songs. But if you go back and read the lyrics of those songs, you will find deeper meanings. I think one I read this morning, I won't remember the verse that I read, but it was Changes by uh, David Bowie. Amazing song. You know, at the time we fell in love with it for whatever reasons then. But if we go back and read the lyrics of some of these songs, we'll realize that, wow, I'm playing that out right now. Another one is Phil Oaks, who was an old folk singer, so I'm an old guy. You know, I'm, I've been, I was around then. <laughs> and I do remember, I do remember, because uh, I, you know, uh, I didn't go over the edge at that time in my life. Uh, Phil Oaks wrote a song called Changes. Go look up the lyrics of the words, the songs. I mean, go look the, word, the words, the lyrics to the songs of any song 
that pops into your mind. This is what's happening. We're collapsing everything and everything now becomes information which we can look at and utilize to bring ourselves out of this funk we're in and move beyond that boulder of our past junk. So the card change. Change is a permanent law of the universe. I am blessed by source to make my change for the better. Again, our changes and our focus point on, on in all of this is to be better. Better than what? Better than we are right now. What does better mean? It just means to raise, to elevate ourselves into a brighter light and a greater understanding of who we are as beautiful beings, divine beings, who are living in these vehicles which exist here on this planet. Somebody saying, I love magic, Olivia Newton, John, magic, great profound lyrics. Thank you. I'll, I will read that. Um, Under Pressure by Queen with David Bowie. Again, Bowie, again, revisit some of this because they're purposeful. It's purpose. This is what I'm guided to do. This is what I'm guided to share with others is that part of the past is not all damage. There were great seers in the past, and they expressed that, but only a few got it. I didn't necessarily get it at the time. I thought I did, just like we all did. But I'm seeing it more clearly now. And that's that was their laying a foundation for us to tap into. And that was their guidance coming through to guide us, just as we are laying a foundation right now for people in the future and our children and our children's children to find and discover as they go through their evolutionary processes at, at well, as well. So this process of evolution is not just human, it's evolution of everything. The universe is evolving. It has to. It all comes out of the field of chaos. It's the creative field. And it manifests. So it feels chaotic. It feels uh, distorted. It feels like that. But there's a higher purpose and organization to all of it. And it's like fractals. You keep going through the fractal and it changes shape, it changes form, it changes color. And then pretty soon you come right back to the same, and it's the same pattern, just repeating and repeating. We have the time now to create new fractals of life, new fractals of existence on this planet. This is why the changes that we're going through are so um, challenging because they're so important. Um, okay. So affirmations for this card. I see myself as a work in process or progress. I accept divine help in all areas of my life. God is the guardian of my soul. Higher power, whatever you want to call supreme being, doesn't matter. I am guided and empowered as I act for my higher good, my higher good. I will recreate a new day and focus on a new dream. So how many of us are stuck in an old dream? How many do you feel like that? Many times that's what I feel. And when this stuff comes up in the middle of the night for me and awakens me to look at, that's what I feel. I says, it is a dream. It's an, it's, a, it's, and it's old. It's old. And it doesn't serve me anymore. And so in this process of who am I? What am I here to do? We need to create a new dream, a new vision. 
that aligns with our hearts and the truth of who we are. As I change my mind, then I am able to change my life. And as somebody said earlier, it's all in the mind, and the mind is a con So we can change that. We can reprogram that, just like we can reprogram the computer to do what we want. We can reprogram that mind. We can reprogram. And it doesn't make us less than who we truly are, because that really doesn't have the power to create who we truly are. Who we truly are ex existed in the womb. Who we truly are came out of the womb. Who we truly are took that first breath. Who we truly are are sitting right here, right now, communing with each other without separation, without judgment, in love, in peace, and in balance. So another thing is, is about balance. How do we balance in the midst of all of these changes? I felt stuck for far too long. Amen. I, I hear you. I mean, this is, I didn't think I was as stuck as I really am, which was, has been an amazing and profound discovery for me this week. Uh, people look at Riverman. Oh, you're this expansive being and you do all of these things and you have these visions and you you work with grids and crystal skulls and and uh, you can shape shift stuff and, and you're, you're like a ma magic man. You're an alchemist and we have all these names we put on ourselves. Am I all of that? Yes, I am. But I also am this part that is so small yet so damaging to myself. And that's the thing when I looked at this and I, I begin to look at this and begin to embrace this small being part of me that comes from here. I look and I'm saying, I'm allowing that to stop me from being who I truly am. Wow, that doesn't look very good, does it? So with each, within each of us, there's that little being. And I say it's a little being because I know how big and how beautiful you truly are. I know how powerful you are. I know how powerful I am. It's just how do we bring it through? How do we bring it through so that each of us benefit from it? So that we create, co-create, a new world <clears throat> in which we all celebrate together. Little happiness cards. I, I don't think I've ever pulled any cards out of these decks. I have many decks of cards. And so I just pulled a card and it's called the Circle of Clouds. It's cute. It's a cute card called the Circle of Clouds. And when I read it, it says the clouds of Dharma are protecting the truth. Well, does the truth need protection? Yes and no. The truth needs protection so that it's not made untruth. But the truth is the gift of our path, of our dharma, that brought us here. And the positive side of that is we are guarding five senses from inappropriate actions. You have the power to overcome all obstacles in your life with the five sensory perceptions, even the fears you once thought insurmountable. So the message is, what goes on in this brain is a useful tool for us when used properly. What we need to do is to Rediscover how to regain control of those tools, the five senses, and put them to work for us. Not because we want something. Not because we, it's, it's, it's a desire. 
but it's because it's an honor to be the masters of those tools. And this is who we are. The tools are not there to master us. We are here to master the tools. Now, all of this is coming through. I don't prepare for these talks. So I want you to know that as I speak, this is my multidimensional self expressing what I'm experiencing in the moment. I write very few notes to, to read from. Take them home with you. Take them home with you. I also wrote, we are in, in, now in the midst of changes, which of course you are all aware of. The interesting part of this is that our connection to each other is rapidly changing frequencies, which creates temporary imbalances. Note the word temporary. So if you're suffering from these imbalances, know that they're all temporary. They're not permanent. And I want to encourage you to find the strength and the, the courage and the, the stamina to move through them. And for some, it's going to be harder than others. And there's no judging. There's no judging here. Oh, my pain's worse than your pain. Oh, I'm suffering more than you. That's, that's, that's gone. That, that crap is gone. Be responsible for your pain and suffering and realize you do not deserve it. You do not deserve that. You are a beautiful, wonderful spirit. And I wrote this, wondrous spirit I am, a fractal reflection of divinity, divine consciousness unfolding. And I'm gonna copy and paste that for you. There we go. Did it? Yeah, come on, you can you can get in there. All right, good. It's gone. You should have it there. That's what we are, and that's who we are. And interestingly, with in closing, I'm going to read this, and it's from "It Rings True: Guidance from the Council" by Ron Head who began channeling Archangel Michael and now the uh, you know, council. But it was interesting as I, I've never read this book. I buy books and I put them on the shelf and eventually they'll call me to read them. And this came this morning as I looked at the bookshelf and said, and it said, and it came to purpose and path. Purpose and path. When we think it is time for you to begin understanding and learning to live as the invaluable, magnificent creator beings that you are. And unless you can allow for the possibility that that is truly who you are and maybe you cannot manifest at that, do you see? I want you to see. I want you to see that. I want you to see in yourself how beautiful each one of you are, how your light, your love, and your peace means so much to so many right now. And I want you to manifest that. I want you to get rid of all of this insanity that says i don't deserve to be this beautiful being however you do that i encourage you to take the steps and as you do that boulder that big rock in the middle of our path will be washed away it'll be diminished to the point where you can just leap over it and keep moving and each successive rock or barrier that you encounter will be smaller and less 
difficult for you to move around or over or through or to just transmute it back into the energy forms that it originally came from. Each one of you are alchemists. Each one of you are magicians. Each one of you are amazing, beautiful beings. So I leave you with that and hope that the changes that we're all going through, with each of us working on them, manifest this great creative, co-creative energy that will rise up out of the ashes, be it the phoenix that rises from the ashes and begins to set forth the format for the future generations, which many of us may choose to return and be here for. Oh, so blessed to be here. So blessed to share that with all of you and the world. And I thank you. I love you. I respect you. I am you. And as my dear friend said to me yesterday, you are me as well. Have a great week. May all of those dreams and fears um, come to full view and you take a new stance and realize you are not powerless over any of this. Have a great week. We'll see you next Friday and blessings of peace, light and love to each and every one of you. Bye-bye.